today's topic is about mental frames. It's a fighting game term that I was surprised to learn is not a universal thing people just get in this genre. And it's so much of a deep Tekken term it's not even in the glossary, which wasn't put up by Tekken people. Whatever. To be fair, mental frames don't actually exist, it's a concept of taking advantage over a hesitating opponent. It's not really a novel concept, you will understand what I'm talking about as I describe it. Then why even invent this new term? I didn't invent it, other people did. Well, uh, I just really like the term, especially for this day and age when a lot of players think of frame data as the only thing important in fighting games. It's not always easy to explain to people why some terrible move is actually really good. Putting the label of mental frames gives a neat explanation on the true potential of the move. Like, it's minus 5, sure, but it has a mental frame, so it's essentially plus when used correctly. So what are the mental frames exactly? I kinda explained it already. We take advantage of opponent's hesitation on making their turn when they have full right to do so. The move is minus 5, they should frame trap me or even punish depending on the game, but they don't. Because, for some reasons, the move has some extra magical frames of advantage preventing them from doing that. The most common way, by far, for a move to have mental frames is strings. That's probably the reason Tekken seems to be the only game that uses the term. When the move has a scary enough follow-up, it doesn't matter that the original move is minus 10. The opponent is just afraid of pressing buttons, they need to first confirm that you are not doing the follow-up before taking action. And that makes that minus 10 move potentially even plus. Valvo Vicky, a fan made Tekken 7 Vicky, kinda confusingly explains exactly that as a situation where the fan is trying to react to an extension not being done before taking the turn. And that, sorry, it's so confusing to read. Uh, it says, the same thing in a more focused fashion. They give Yoshimitsu down for 1 2 as the example. Down for 1 is minus 4 on block, but the extension is an uninterruptible delayable counter hit launcher, so you would hesitate trying to take advantage of that minus 4. And if you try to specifically react to the follow up not happening, by rough estimations you make the minus 4 move into a plus 3 move. And that's the point, that's the mental frames. Of course, if you do frame trap Yoshi and Yoshi doesn't do the follow up, you win the interaction. But that is you ignoring the mental frame and doing guesswork instead. That means the advantage either way is on Yoshi's side, even though it's still a minus 4 move. That does very much happen in 2D games, but in a bit of different shape, since in traditional 2D fighters it's not strings per se, it's cancels and reversals, which are more or less universal. Characters with fully invisible reversals can threaten the thing after pretty much any move, and it's worth it to get it blocked a few times if it makes the opponent give up their turn. And it's exactly because of this universal quality that a DP might happen after any move that makes the term of mental frames kinda redundant. Since DP can come after any move, every move has mental frames, and thus they all don't have any mental frames. And it's also balanced in a way to not provide a very good reward you don't see many death combos of the piece. Well, in Tekken, these mental frame strings are often some of the most damaging launchers for the character. Although the reward may come in more than just damage and repositioning. My main in Tekken, Lei, has mental frames on an ascended level in the string of Razor Rush. It's a 5-hit string and every hit is very delayable. After every hit, Lei can just sidestep, also delayably, into stances. Each stance transition is different, and some stances are naturally protected against lows or highs, and I can assure you nobody remembers all the frame data for every variation of a hit in this train. It doesn't launch on cutter hit or anything, but it provides such a gateway to lace real mix-ups, even having sub-bar frames around minus 12 reversal block and mere plus 2 on hit across the board, and they get much worse if you delay. Razor Rush is considered his best move, even by pro lay players and it's directly due to the mental frames it possesses. There is another way for mental frames to exist. It's more skill-based, or rather, lack of skill-based way. It's when a move appears more plus than it actually is, either by forcing animation that is typical for plus moves, or by having a very short stun so you question yourself if you have already felt punish. Obviously, proper skill overcome that, but even then, one of Heihachi's main gimmicks is having the moves that look plus but aren't and that definitely helps on all levels. 
The Fina Scarecrow 4 is minus 18, but it rarely gets punished at mid-level. And getting it properly punished is even rarer. The recovery is pretty quick, and the Fina can follow the move up with another Scarecrow 4, which would counter a late punish attempt. Don't ask how it works, it's a tense transition type of thing. It's fun and all, but it's not what we are talking about right now. So people naturally use punishes that are safer, which well gives the move extra frames of safety that don't actually exist, i.e. the mental frames. And the third way I would broadly categorize as taunt. Come on, come on, ju ju just just attack, he's, he's not doing anything, why, why are you doing anything, please? The taunt kind of mental frames comes from the dangers that might be there, but isn't. With others, the danger is all written out. After the move connects, there is this mind game of a possible follow-up that you might first want to confirm isn't coming, and that hesitation outright giving up the turn are the mental frames. A taunt isn't like that. The frames just start, and you cannot know if the danger is actually coming for you until it's too late. Mishima's wave dash is genuinely scary to interrupt. They can do some of the best moves in the game out of it at any moment. Pips would do double wave dash into electric wind god fist, triple wave dash into hell sweep, single wave dash cancel into wild standing 2. There is a million combinations that creates mental advantages that could be avoided by just interrupting, but that opens you up for counterplay. As I said, I was surprised it was such a Tekken specific term, and that's because there is a 2D character that also flourishes because of this last style of mental frames Queens in Fantasy Strike. How can I explain? His taunts look like real attacks until it's too late. This is forward A, a lunch punch. And this is forward A, hold. Same thing, but it's an illusion instead. The opponent cannot know if the illusion is real or not, so it's sensible to block it. And when you are blocking, you aren't attacking. And when you aren't attacking, I can go in instead. Of course, sometimes you do just throw out a real forward A, so they don't just ignore the mental frames. Sometimes they deal with the illusion by option selecting, jumping over it and attacking. And Queen can just unhear that. But I'm standing there for 28 frames, all counter hitable doing nothing, and yet I force the opponent to give up their rightfully deserved turn and their safe approach. And it's far from the only mental frame tool he has. It's actually the worst one out of four. That's his jumping B, positive speed. Full screen, very good air-to-air -air attack, and it does read grounded opponents. It has other nice properties as well. Well, jumping B, hold, does the old switcheroo again and sends out the fake wins. And after both, Jumping B and Jumping B hold, Quince is still actionable, so he can do the Jumping B mix again. You can imagine how much work these illusions that don't even hit the opponent do to assist Quince. But wait, there is more. This is his grounded B, high standard. Did you notice that? It's an illusion that goes behind the opponent. If you press B again, before the illusion appears, Quince will perform this dive kick, which does indeed cross up, and is very much plus on hit and block. This alone makes challenging queens very scary. You never know which one's real. There's this particular technique I call Queen's Wave Dash. It's just moving forward with the move, but it's scary to interrupt it if it sets up for a pretty nasty OK. And yet, there is one more. His air super spawns two illusory copies that just do random stuff, and a good queens can hide among the clothes until just the right moment. And again, the illusions like, are purely visual, it's all that is happening is the opponent giving away the precious mental frames for queens to abuse. Some would call that fake pressure, but I find it not very accurate. The pressure is real. There is always a chance that this 4 day happens to be a real one. There is always a chance Kazuya will do a perfect electric queen gut fist instantly. Yoshi can always just finish the string if you get too trigger happy. The pressure is real, it's just different. It's mental pressure that results in mental frame advantage. And Queen's was indeed considered top 1 character at several points in time. There are multiple reasons, I can't just attribute that to the mental frames, but they have been a part of the character since the beginning, and they make him much more scared to challenge. Since I started this video, King of Fighters 15 came out, and it has Chizuri, who also has clones like Queen's, 
but her clones hit and rather than the opponent giving away their turn for nothing it's more of them giving away their turns trying to punish their own Chizuri it definitely results in some mental advantage but I can't really comment about it because I'm pretty bad at the game so I don't get to properly use the clones yet which is definitely an interesting example I will, I will still look into that so as I said mental frames don't exist but they do actually 